Today we're going to be mixing some practical demonstration with a little bit of pedantry as we talk about the fundamental camera movements and how to refer to them correctly. Oh yeah, and we're going to be doing it on a slightly excessive but very cool motion control rig. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone and let's get jiggy with it. <laughs> So today's video was sponsored by Edelkrone, which means two things. One, I'm going to be giving away some motion control hardware to one lucky commenter on this video. And two, I'm going to be flexing my motion control rig throughout this video as I explain the camera movements. Alright, so there's six fundamental camera movements that we're going to cover, as well as two bonus lens movements, and then some compound movements which are created from combinations of those. So let's jump over to the bench and we'll start with probably the most well-known movement, the pan. Now I made a whole separate video on panning and how it relates to frame rate judder and speed control and I highly recommend you watch that video if you want to know more about keeping your shot smooth. But the gist of it is that you have to control how quickly you make these movements, whether you're panning or any other movement for that matter, in order to prevent getting an unwanted flickering or stuttering effect. Also panning, like many other camera movements, is improved when you use a fluid head or add enough weight and resistance to overcome the natural shakes of your hand. Or you can just let robots from the future do it for you, like with Edelkrone's new Head One, which can pan up to 15 pounds of camera gear and can actually do a lot more than that. And this is one of the units that I'm going to be giving away, but we'll get more into that a little later on. Now normally you would put a head on this thing, which is why there's a 3 8 inch screw on the top of it. But if you have a 3 8 to quarter 20 adapter, you can actually attach your camera right to it. This thing uses Canon LPE6 batteries, which is good because they're pretty ubiquitous, and it's controlled using the Edelkrone app. Now at this point you have two options. You can either manually pan it by holding the pan dial to one side and you can see that the camera's panning across like that. Or you can set different positions. So say we want to start it here and we'll put that as pose two and then we'll pan it across to the left and set that as pose one. And now when we press pose two, it'll just automate the motion and move across to the second position. Now this is also where you want to keep in mind your speed like I was saying earlier. There's a speed toggle and also a ramping toggle to choose how smooth it's going to start and end. Now the point of a pan is to demonstrate the breadth of the set or the environment, or to show something that was previously unseen. And small pans of even only a few centimeters can help make a shot feel more dynamic. And the same is true for tilting, which is going to be our second fundamental camera movement. Now I'm going to swap out the head one for something bigger to demonstrate the tilting, but you can still use the head one for tilting. You would just use it this way instead of this way. And you can actually get two of these and use them in conjunction with a bracket that Edelkrone makes that you would have a pan and tilt head. But for panning and tilting together, I like to use the head plus, mainly because it's scarier looking. So for tilting, all the same principles apply. Weight and resistance will still reduce unwanted shakes. It's still meant to expand a scene or make it feel more dynamic or to track a subject just along a different axis. And you still have to watch your speed when doing it. When using the Head Plus, you operate it in the same way with the app, but now you can control both movements, the tilt and the pan at the same time. And this is one area where motion hardware really shines. Typically when you use a handheld panning or tilt head, you'll find that when you try to do both movements at the same time, like say in a 45 degree angle, that often it ends up kind of having a stare effect where you tilt then pan, tilt then pan, and it can be quite difficult to master to do that by hand unless you're really practiced with your head. But with the Head Plus, I can just use the keyframing to choose a start point at the top left and then an end point in the bottom right, and then have a snack while making movie magic. Now you'll notice that this rig is sitting on a slider. This is the Slider Plus Pro from Edelkrone, and we're going to use it to demonstrate our next two camera movements, and this is also when things are going to get a little pedantic. When you move a camera from side to side, you'll hear a lot of different terms for it. You'll hear slide, in this case, which makes sense because we're using a slider, but it doesn't really give any sense of direction. You'll even hear pan occasionally, which is just wrong and confusing. Make sure that you're only using pan to describe that horizontal sweeping movement that takes place at the camera's center column. You can't pan up or down, and you can't can't pan forward or backwards, you can only pan left and right, and panning does not require the camera's position to change. And you'll also hear this kind of movement called tracking. Now, there's quite a bit of debate here because some people believe that it's called tracking because often this type of movement is done when you lay out rails in a track like a railroad and you move the camera along that track, thus tracking. But other people believe it's called tracking because you're actually tracing and following a subject through the frame, thus actually literally tracking the subject, so it's a tracking shot. But in both cases, it's not actually specific to the direction. Often tracking has to be done perpendicularly, but because tracking or following shots can be done handheld and they can be done all over the place, then they don't really indicate left or right. So the correct term for this movement, not that tracking is wrong, but where you can't really get it mistaken with anything else, is trucking or truck. If you truck the camera left 
or truck the camera right, then the camera's movement is clear that the entire camera setup is going to shift its position to the left or to the right. Now we can use the app in the same way for this movement because I have Edelkron's slide module version 2 hooked up to the slider which will motor drive the belt and automate the movement. So all we really have to do is just move it to the left. Now I'm going to tilt the camera down. Now remember tilting isn't part of this motion but I'm just choosing how I want the camera angle to take place from the get go. Then I'm going to set this as pose 1 and then I'm going to move down a little bit to the right and set this as pose 2. Now when I tap pose 1, the camera will truck to the left. This type of shot has a similar utility to a pan in that you are expanding the breadth of the scene, but it has the advantage of remaining parallel with the subject to give the illusion that you are traveling alongside. Where with a pan, the subject would be getting further and further away and you'd only be changing the angle of the camera. Now if you change this direction of movement from left and right to forward and backward, we'd have our fourth camera movement, the dolly, named because usually the camera and the tripod are placed on a dolly that can be used to move toward and away from the subject. It's important to note, however, that if your subject stays stationary and you're not following them, then this is going to require you to change focus because your distance from the subject is going to change as you dolly in and out. And this is another area where motion control hardware is super handy as a solo shooter, because as a solo shooter you obviously don't have a focus puller, so let the robots pull the focus for you. In this case I'm using the optional focus module for the Head Plus, which assigns focus position keyframes alongside the movement keyframes using the app the exact same way. So let's move the camera forward, we're dollying in towards this drill up here, and we'll position the tilt and pan to where we like it, and set the focus where we like it as well. And then we'll pull the camera back, which is dollying out, or dollying rearward or backward, and we'll line the shot back up, and again we'll set the focus to make sure that it's reasonably sharp, I'm not trying that hard here. And we'll set that as pose 1, so now we have both of our poses. And then just like we did before, you just tap the pose, and everything's going to be done at the same time now. It's going to move forward. If there's any panning and tilting that needs to be adjusted, it's going to do that. And it's also going to change the focus as we get closer to the drill. Now you can combine a truck and a dolly for a compound angular movement, but these usually require a dance floor, which is an industry term for a smoothed out floor surface that allows you to truck and dolly your camera in whatever angles are necessary. Now we can create a version of this on a smaller scale by positioning our slider on an angle and then using the slider motor as well as the panning control to create sort of a compound shot. It's an interesting shot because it covers two kinds of distance, the depth of the frame and the width, while potentially revealing something about the subject or its position in that environment. And combining panning with trucking is how you would create that parallax effect, but we'll talk more about parallax in another video. The fifth fundamental camera movement is the roll, which involves changing the leveling of your camera. Now this one's definitely a lot less popular than the other ones, but it has gained some traction recently with handheld gimbals offering the inception mode, which basically continually rolls your camera, and it has been in some major productions like Stranger Things and of course Christopher Nolan movies. However, there is another more common use of the roll, and that's to create a Dutch angle. Now the rolling part of this movement isn't so pronounced, but you just angle the horizon a little differently to create a head tilt effect which is used to create a sense of discomfort or confusion. And you can also combine this with the other camera movements that we talked about. Now with the Head Plus, I'm not so sure that this is advised, but because this whole Head Plus unit can lay flat for packing it up, you can actually use it to cant the camera a little bit and get that roll effect and thus create a Dutch angle. Now we obviously aren't going to be able to motorize this rolling action, again you're going to want to use a handheld gimbal for that, but we can use it to hold that Dutch angle position so that we can then use the other movements of the system in order to create a disorienting shot. When you go for this kind of shot I recommend that you use some parallel lines in the background so that you have something to indicate to the viewer that they are canted a little bit to the side. Again, I'm not so sure that it's advised to use the head plus on this kind of angle, but it works. Our sixth and final fundamental movement is the pedestal, or more commonly known as booming, and this is where the camera moves up and down. It's called pedestal because television cameras are huge and were often attached to a physical pedestal which would have a pneumatic lifting device to raise and lower the camera. But on movie sets this work is done by cranes and jibs, which is why it's usually called booming instead. You can boom the camera up and down, and sometimes combine it with tilting in order to keep the subject in the frame. Now I can't really do this on the Edelkron system because I don't have any motors powerful enough to lift the rig vertically, but I do have sort of an improvised way of doing this with a slider. 
If we position the slider vertically and then use a head with separate tilt and pan segments like the new Edelkrone Flex Tilt Head 2, we can then position our camera normally and slide it up and down. Now we have to do this by hand, but we can still somewhat effectively simulate a pedestal or boom movement. But you might find you get smoother results to lower it rather than lift it and then reverse the footage in post. All right, so that's it for camera movements, but there are two lens movements that I wanted to talk about that I alluded to earlier in the video. The first one we already kind of covered a little bit, and that's racking focus. When we dollied in and out, and when we also tracked some of the movement, we had to change our focus throughout the shot. But we can also use racking focus to give the illusion of a camera movement, even though the camera remains stationary. If you focus on something up close, and then slowly rack focus through the frame to something in the background, it kind of gives the illusion that you're moving the viewer through the frame and deeper into the shot. The other lens movement is zoom. Now this one's pretty obvious on what it is and is definitely one of the most widely used tools. It has a similar effect to the dolly in the sense that you get closer to your subject, but in this case the camera stays stationary. But if you combine all three of those things, the rack focus, the zoom, and the dolly, then you can create the famous dolly zoom, where you zoom in the opposite direction of your dolly and rack focus if necessary. Now this is difficult to do without autofocus as a single shooter because there's just too many things to turn at once, but I was able to do it on the head plus by hacking the focus module a little bit. Instead of attaching the ring to the focus ring on my camera, I attach it to the zoom ring, so now I can use the focus module to zoom in and out at a controlled and automated process, but I have to rely on the camera's autofocus to ensure that the shot stays in focus during that. And it also helps if you stop down the camera a little bit to give you a deeper depth of field, that way you don't have to rely on the autofocus as much. Now I did all this with the head plus and slider combo, but Edelkrone does have specific products for that purpose, including a full line of dolly devices. But despite that, I do like the versatility of their products, like this head one, which I mentioned I'll be giving away to a commenter on this video. But you can use this one device to pan, tilt, and even do time lapses, which is all controlled in the app. And even if your camera doesn't have an intervalometer, there's a shutter release connection port here that you can use to connect to your camera, which will activate the shutter based on the interval that you set in the app. So there's really nothing stopping you from creating time lapses regardless of what camera you have. And what's great is you don't even need to monitor it or keep the app running. In fact, you can walk away and even turn off your phone and the time lapse will keep going until the sequence is complete. And this is doubly handy if you want to control two different systems at once. For instance, with the Head One, there's this product turntable kit that you can get, which I have here. And this allows you to spin products, whatever you want, obviously, using the Head One. And basically, you just use the Head One upside down because on the bottom there's little grips. And then it'll do the same pan motion, but this time it'll spin it like a lazy Susan. And if you tap both position one and position two at the same time, it'll continue to move back and forth until you tell it to stop. And since it can also use Sony NPF batteries in addition to mains power, you'll be able to continue this motion for a very long time, giving you plenty of time to go get another snack. that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done.